Hello students, today we're going to do lesson 4.3, equations of the form ax plus b equals c. Okay, we're just going to jump into this and start doing some examples, and at the end I'm going to show you a couple of things that you might run into. Okay, so let's start with example one. This one looks just like the um, form up here, ax plus b equals c, and um, it goes like this, 2x plus 6 equals 21. Okay, so in the lesson 4.1, we learned how to do one-step equations. This one I call a two-step equation because we have to do two different things. There's multiplication, which is right here, 2 times x, and then there's addition, the plus 6. Okay, so we're going to take care of both of those. And the way you decide which one to do first is you always do um, plus and minus first, and then you do multiplication and division next. So it's kind of the opposite of order of operations. So I'm going to get rid of the plus 6 first. And how do I do that? How do I get rid of a plus 6? I minus 6. Okay, so this is just like the one-step equations, except that I'm doing two different steps. So when I do that minus 6, this part on here turns to 0, right? So all I have left is the 2x. And over on the other side, I do 21 minus 6, and I get 15. Okay, and then I'm going to divide by 2. That would be my next step, right? If I had just 2x equals 15, I would divide by 2. And if you did this, which gives you 15 halves, if you put that into your calculator, if you put in 15 divided by 2, you're going to get 7.5. But I don't want you to do that. I want you to leave it as a fraction unless it tells you to make it a decimal, okay? So we're always gonna leave our answers in the way that they were made to be. If it was a decimal, then you could turn it into a decimal. But if it's not, I want you to leave it as an improper fraction. Okay, now that we're finished with that, we always have to check, just like we did when we had one step equation. These checks are a little bit longer. You're gonna take the original equation which was 2x plus 6 equals 21. But instead of the x, I'm going to erase the x. Instead of the x, we're going to put in uh, the answer, which was 15 halves. So times 15 halves. Okay. And now I'm going to do 2 times 15 halves. And if you put that into your calculator, you're going to get 15. If you don't know how to put... Uh, fractions into your calculators, then you have to actually do that problem. And the way you would do that is your twos would uh, reduce or simplify each other, cancel each other out, and that's how you just get 15. Okay, and now I know 15 plus 6 is 21, and that equals 21, and my answer checked. Okay, and tomorrow I'm actually going to have students over for in-person class at my house. And if you have calculators that you're not sure how to use, make sure you bring those so that I can show you how to use them. Okay, so that was example one. Let's move on to example two. And change the color here. Example two. Okay, in example two we have 4y minus 36 equals 16. Okay, so this is still in the form of ax plus b equals c, except that we have a minus instead of a plus. Okay, so we're going to solve this same way we did the other one. But now I have a minus 36, so I'm always going to get rid of the minus or the plus first in this situation. Later on, when we get into some harder, not just simple two-step, this is not always what you do first. But in these um, instances, you're going to get rid of that. So if I have a minus 36, I'm going to plus 36 on both sides. So all you're doing is pretending like, it, like you didn't have that 4 there, and it was just y minus 36. What would you do? I would add 36 on both sides. So this part would be 0, right? And then, so all I have on this side is 4y. And then when I add the other side, I get 52. Okay, now what do you do to solve 4y equals 42? This was on your problems yesterday, or not yesterday, I'm sorry, the Thursday. And I divide by 4, so I get y equals 13. And that's my answer. And if you're seeing how I'm 
how I'm writing this all down. This is how I want to see your work. The only thing you don't have to show that I did on this was that circle and the X around the 36s. Okay, everything else should look just like my work. Because if you're not showing your steps, if you're trying to do them in your head, you're going to make a mistake. And I don't want to want you to make mistakes. So make sure that you show all your work. Now we're going to check it. So remember the problem, the original problem looked like this. So, and I'm just rewriting the original problem so you see how I'm checking. So when I check it, instead of Y, I'm gonna put the answer. So instead of Y, I'm putting what Y equals, which is 30, 13. And then I write everything else the same. Now, if you look down this equal sign, we're just gonna keep this side, oh, hold on. We're gonna keep this side being 16. Okay, so that's just going to stay 16 all the way down. This is the side that I'm working on solving. So I'm going to do 4 times 13. That gives me 52 minus 36. Now I'm going to do 52 minus 36. This is not the end of your check. If you leave it like this, it does not tell me you checked it. What you're doing is working on the left side of the equation to show me that it equals the right side of the equation. So now I do 52 minus 36 and I will get 16, and that equals the other side of the equation. So notice how I worked all the way down on this side, or I just did the 16 all the way down, and then on this side I worked all the problem all the way down to 16. Okay, and those checked. Okay, so y equals 13 was correct. Now before I do the, no, I'll go ahead and do the next one, and then we'll talk about what else uh, can come up. Okay, example three. This one is going to be negative 2x plus 5x plus 9 equals 87. Okay, now to solve this problem, before I start doing anything, oops, sorry, I messed up my screen. Before I start doing anything, I am going to add my like terms. So I want to make it as simplified as I can. So when I add my like terms, I'm going to do negative 2x plus 5x, and that gives me 3x. Now you'll notice that it's in the form that all the other ones were. This is a two-step equation now, even though it kind of took three steps because I had to combine my like terms. So always look for like terms to combine first. Okay, so now I'm going to minus 9 on both sides. And so this part will give me zero, so I only have three X equals, and when I subtract these two, I'm gonna get 78. And then I'm gonna divide by three on both sides. And my answer is X equals 26. Okay, now let's check that, make sure it's right, because I'm sitting here thinking, is that right? I'm not using my calculator. So let's check it and see if it's right. So I'm gonna take this original equation. Do not use this one, okay? Do not use this problem because that is not the original equation. I'm gonna use this top one as my check. So I'm gonna have, I'm just gonna write it down right here so you can see how I am replacing all the X's with 26. Okay, so here I go. I have negative two times 26 plus five times 26 plus the nine equals 87. So now I need to multiply those. So two times 26, that's gonna equal negative 52. And then five times 26 is gonna give me, let's see, that's gonna be 30, that's going to be 130, and then I still have the plus 9, and that equals 87. So now I need to do negative 52 uh, plus 130, okay? So when I do negative uh, 52 plus 130, I get 78, and then I still have that plus 9, and then, so then I have to do 78 plus nine is 87. Okay, see how they both equaled the same thing. And look, my step, my 
my check had four lines to it. If my check has four lines to it, your check should have four lines to it. If it only has three lines and mine had four lines, I'm gonna take off points because you have to show every single step on your check. Okay, now that we've done all the examples, let me go through a few things you may see on your work today. So you may see things that look like, so we just did a problem, we did some problems that look like this, right? Well, what if you see a problem that looks like this? Okay, it's the same exact problem, only some numbers are changed around. So you could do two things. You can either switch both of these. Remember, commutative property tells you that you can flip things with plus signs. So if I have A plus B, it's the same thing as B plus A. So I can flip that five and two X and make my problem look like this so that it's easy to see and recognize. But some of y'all can see what you're supposed to do first anyway with that problem. And you could say, well, I know I'm supposed to take care of the plus five and think about it backwards. So I'm gonna minus five on both sides, okay? So you can do it like that or you can do it like this and flip them first. I recommend flipping them first because there's not many kids that can do it like this right away. Okay, now let us let me show you something else that you might see. You might see something that looks like this. Um, 10 equals 2x plus 5. Oops, not b, plus 5. Okay, so this is this exact same problem that I just did up here. But notice that the 10 is on the left side instead of the right side. Okay, so if I have A equals B, it's the same thing as B equals A. All I did was flip which side the equal sign is on. So I can take 10 and put it on this side and take 2X plus 5 and put it on this side. So I can flip these around and it doesn't change the problem. So then I could solve it. Okay, now some kids can take this, uh, 10 equals 2x plus 5, and they can do the minus 5 in their head, or not in their head, but on their paper, and they can work the whole problem backwards. And then they would get x equals 5 halves, but I don't ever want your x on the right. You would need to rewrite it like this. So some kids can do that, and I don't mind if you do that but a lot of kids make mistakes when they're trying to do the problem backwards. So I recommend that you take the whole thing and flip the whole thing around, okay? One more thing you're gonna see that I didn't show you on this one is you may see one that has division in it. It's the same as all the ones that we've been doing, okay? You're going to do your steps the same way. I'm gonna do minus eight on both sides. So I have n divided by three equals negative seven. Then you're gonna do what you did on all your work before, you're gonna multiply by three. And so now I have n equals negative 21. Okay, I'm not gonna check this one because this isn't really a, an example. I was just trying to show you that the divide it by three is still the same as if I'm multiplying. I'm just sol solving the problems like I did before. Okay, I think those are the only ones that you may see that are are um, different. Actually, I just saw another one, sorry. Um, you may have one where it's a like three n divided by five equals nine. Okay, so to solve this one, you could do it two different ways. You could get rid of the um, division first, so you could get rid of this five and multiply by five. So remember that gets rid of that. And now I have three N equals 45. So then I would divide by three and that would give me N equals one, five, 15. Okay, so that's one way you can do it. And, and some kids like to do it this way that's uh, maybe confusing. So don't do it this way if for most kids some kids can do it this way where they do times five thirds. I'm gonna do times five thirds and see how the threes cancel out and the fives cancel out. So all I have left is N equals, and then I would solve this one by doing three times five is 15. 
Okay, so I suggest this way for most everybody, but if you understand what I did here, then you can do it this way. Okay, and that's it for lesson 4.3. Thank you for listening.